Did you guys know the Prophet peace be upon him said? Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-mu'minu tahta dhilli sadaqatihi yawm al-qiyamah Prophet peace be upon him said the one who gives in sadaqah his sadaqah will be a shay on yawm al-qiyamah and we're here every Friday and Sunday doing dawah to many people alhamdulillah seven shahadas two weeks ago Shahadu an la ilaha illa Allah Two shahadas last week Two shahadas last week You can support this brothers and sisters with the material Alhamdulillah some of them we pay for Some of them Alhamdulillah we get for free As you guys donated to the Salah Plus project Alhamdulillah brothers and sisters If you can donate whatever you can It will help our operations To have a cameraman An editing team And some of the brothers who come here Alhamdulillah And dedicate their time and effort To give in da'wah inshallah The link is in the description box below Barakallahu feekum yeah. um, So the, the, this concept also that In Christianity that when a woman is giving birth and she, she is, she, the, the, the pain she gets is because of her causing Adam to eat from the tree. Yeah. So we say this is nonsense because what, what's, what's a woman, forget all, any woman, all of these billions of trillions of women that lived after Eve, what's their fault, let alone Eve's. We don't believe that it was both of them that fell into uh, sin. And Allah in the Quran actually um, directly questions Adam. Yes, and Adam says, look, I'm sorry, I, rep uh, I sinned. Now it's very important, Islam shows us repentance. Repentance was sent to the world, not sin. We, 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 the main thing that we have is that we should have repentance So we don't believe in this concept That's why if you look at Christianity and many other religions They have this, um, these sem demigods Always there's this person in the middle that you have to go through to God That's another thing that never What, what was it that? Um, to my, my point is I never felt comfortable calling Jesus the son of God Or Jesus being God as part of the Trinity Well, why? Just because curious, yeah. If God is a omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent being, yes. then why? Surely the fact that He has a Son, and we pray through Him, it, it, it makes Him not God by the definition of God. Thank you. I mean, you're, you're speaking like a Muslim. I mean, I mean, it's like it's like I'm hearing a Muslim preaching here. It just never made sense to me. You know, you know what we call that in Islam? We call that the fitra. Have you heard of it? Yeah. The fitra means the innate disposition that you was born with, uh, born with. Because you know when you have a phone and you change all the settings yeah. And sometimes you're like, you know what, erase it and go back to the factory settings What you've said that is a factory setting is basically going back to your original uh, being when you was created is what? That I don't need to come and tell you Can God have a son or is God a man? You reject it from the get-go You're like, that does but not does make sense Because of who God is exactly That's why we believe every person is born a Muslim That's why we as Muslims say every person is born a Muslim You know why? Exactly. Why? Because the thing is, you already have that internally. You didn't. Nobody had to tell you that. You had to be taught that God has a son and God is Jesus. But nobody has to tell you because there was a study done in Oxford University by Justin Barrett. They looked at kids and left them like uh, without any outside influence of religion. They all were brought up um, believing in a higher power. Yeah. None of them came and said, "Oh, the Son of God." Or none of that. So this is what we're talking about, which is the fitrah that you have. So in Islam, we say that we don't have this thing of. Oh, I'm dirty, I'm a sinner, I can't stand in the presence of God. God says, I accept you. When you speak to the Christians, they're like, no, no, I'm like, you don't understand. God accepts you the way you are. The only thing God wants is the following. Do not associate partners to him. Like you, you rejected. You said, no, I believe God doesn't have a son. And that's what the Quran says. And uh, I don't know if you, like in uh, uh, the 112th uh, chapter in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ السَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوَ وَنَحَدْ Say he is one. Yes. Uh, Self-sufficient He does not beget nor is he begotten and there is nothing like him This is who God is to us He doesn't have a father, he doesn't have a mother, he doesn't have a daughter, he doesn't have a son Even certain pagan Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula would associate daughters as angels They would say, oh that's God's, you know, daughters Yes? Now why? Because they look down on females So they were actually insulting God They would ascribe sons to themselves and they would ascribe daughters to God Yeah? As an insult, not that there's anything wrong with it But they despised females so they would ascribe that to them and we say God doesn't have a daughter or a son so to us we say that all of us can stand in the presence of God when I sin I repent to God I don't say oh I need to go for Prophet Muhammad and then stop at Jesus and or maybe visit saints. exactly in, in Catholicism this is what happens they Mary for example is they they, they, they don't say she's God like they say she's, she's, the, she's the mother of God yes. Which is a mother of God <laughs> So the thing is when you go to certain Catholic churches You'll have the statue of Mary So the, the point is that you are indirectly associating partners Because if you are seeing that she has an attribute argument sake To hear you To forgive your sin Please guys no more uh, how, Where am I going to put this? Should I put it on my watch? What should I do? Can I give you guys some? I can't carry anymore. I'm feeling the weight. I'm feeling the weight. 
Okay, I'm going to hold it in my hand because I love you for the sake of Allah. So, so the point is this, is that we say that anyone can stand in the, in the presence of God. God doesn't want you to be perfect. He knows you're going to be sinners. And what do we, we have the evidence from the Prophet Muhammad. He told us that if mankind was not to sin, so if mankind all decided one day not to sin, Allah would destroy all of them, bring forth another nation that sins but repents. So obviously this is an example to us, which is what? God is telling us, I don't want you to be sinless. You are going to sin. Good. I just want you to turn back to me in repentance. That's what you do with your sin. That is you it. And not only that, not only does your sins get forgiven, Allah turns them into good deeds. What, that's what we believe. Because if it's a fresh start, if you've repented and said, God, I've changed my ways. God Almighty says, all of those sins that you've done, arguments sake, um, robbing people. Somebody was robbing people for God, how many years? Obviously, there's other, another um, principle that needs to apply, which is to give the rights of the people that you stole from. Repenting is not just enough because if you know who you stole from, it's your friend. Islam is very careful to how you deal with other people. There's God's rights and human beings' rights. God's rights, of course, come first, but there's a heavy emphasis on human beings' rights, which means that if I stole from my friend and I repented, I have to return that money. But if I go to him and tell him that I stole from him, it's going to cause problems. So Islam will tell us that do it in a way where it's like, you know what, bro? Here's a gift of 400 pounds. I just want you to have it. So you do it in subtle ways that your relationship is not ruined. You get it? Even if you spoke ill of someone, you don't go to them and say, oh, you know, I spoke ill of you. I mean, if that person is ready to accept and say he's forgiven, but if it's someone, a grudge holder like me, you know, my wife always says you're a grudge holder. If she's watching this, yes, yeah, she's the forgiving one. I'm the grudge holder. I'm like, no, I'm the, yeah, a grudge holder like me, it'll be like, you know what? It's better that you go and give, uh, speak good of where you spoke ill of him and maybe give it charity in there. It's just ways of dealing with that, yeah. But I don't, I don't give a sermon. If, in, in question that you have about Islam, anything, like what's stopping you from accepting Islam? We've got someone, I've got sisters already a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Do you, have, you guys have any questions? I have two questions. Sure. Um, there might be stupid question, I don't know. No question is stupid, sister. Okay. Every question is valid. I have, this is something all Muslims I think talk about. I want to talk about jinn. Yeah. I want to ask, so, what, shaitan. Yeah. Is he jinn? He's from the jinn kind. So we have different three types of creation. Us human beings, we are, which are created of cre uh, clay or earth. Second creation is the angels, which are created of light. And uh, you already, you need to take a shahada, sister. Is it, what's your name? <laughs> Lu Lu Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, 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 she, she knows more about Islam than I do. Uh, the jinns are created by, from smokeless fire. I'm like, she, already, she already knows, I'm just, I'm just reading her lips. And she's, she, she knows that smokeless fire. So uh, she's on point, alhamdulillah. So smokeless fire, yeah. So those are the three types of uh, creation that we know. Okay, yeah. so how did, like, what happened to the shaitan that he became, because he was... Um, he was a right, very righteous person. Yeah, and then, yeah. and then Adam happened, and then he wouldn't bow mm. down. So, so what happened is with jealousy. So jealousy is one of the root words, but it's actually, jealousy is not the cause of it. So we don't believe that, there is difference of opinion on this, but we don't believe that Satan fell into disbelief just by not bowing. Okay. Now, Satan had jealousy, so... He was the one when Allah tells in the Quran that he told the angels to bow down, all of them bow down except him. It comes across as if Iblis is an angel. Yeah, that's... that's it comes across like that. No, we say he was at the ranks of the angels because the angels kind of do as they are told, even though we believe angels have some sort of a free will, some sort of a free will, yeah? But the angels do as they are told, yeah? They can ask questions like they did in the Quran when they asked Allah, Oh Allah, why are you creating the humankind? They're going to cause bloodshed on earth. Now Allah says, I know what you don't know. So they can question, but they cannot disobey. <clears throat> so, when Adam was created, Iblis was obviously curious because before the soul was breathed into Adam, Iblis was observing him. Like, because Allah, we believe Allah created Adam with his own hands. Now in hands, we say the way with his majesty, not like this. Yeah. So, we say God Almighty created him with his own hands. So, Adam, obviously, Iblis was at the ranks of the angels. Now, if you have genuinely reached that rank for the servitude of God, you will not have a problem if your boss or whoever decides otherwise. So when Adam was then breathed his soul into him, yes, and then we believe he sneezed. When he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah, all praise belong to God. And then when Adam, when all the angels, including Iblis, was told to bow down to how magnificent God Almighty has created Adam, he refused. Now, a few things happened here. Number one, jealousy, that he is better. Because what did he say? And it's actually quite profound here. He said, I am better than him. So the first statement is, number one, the fact that you're rejecting a commandment from God is serious in itself. Now, the second category is him saying, 
I am better than him. Now, it's very interesting because the moment he said that, he proved what? That he's not better than him. Because if he was better than he would have, exactly. If he would have obeyed what God said, if you are better than him or equal, God said it, I'll do it. The fact that you didn't, you just proved that you are not better than him. By saying you are better than him. So that was number one. Number two, he ascribed a mistake to Allah. He's basically saying to God Almighty, he's saying to Allah that you, because you misguided me, he's basically saying, no, it's your fault. That, that's what he's saying in the Quran. In the Quran, he's saying, and because you misguided me, watch what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, misguide, I'm going to do this and that. So the point is what? When you come and negate an attribute of God Almighty or, or claim, or claim, uh, is it for them? Yes, this, oh, you have one? She's already got one, she's a quick brother. She's, 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 already, she's already armed. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you for your uh, faith. So yeah, so the thing is this, is that when you ascribe a mistake to God Almighty, this is a sin. If I come and say, oh, um, God um, should have not created me like this. What, what, are you trying, what, are you, what are you trying to say? Yeah. Do you get it? So this is where Iblis fell into disbelief. Now, what's interesting is, how comes Adam fell into the same, well, not same sin. God told him, don't eat from the tree. He ate from the tree. Iblis was told, bow down, he didn't. What's the difference? The difference is the following. Is that one, when he committed the sin, Adam, he said, it's my fault, I repent. Adam said, it's your fault. Do you see the attitude? One commits a sin against God and says, it's my fault, please forgive me. Um, I don't want to be among the wrongdoers. Humbling yourself, repentance. What does Iblis do? He says, no, you misguided me. Watch what I'm going to do. That is the attitude. But I'll answer your question. Yeah. Yes. So do you have any questions? For now, I think that's... No problem. Um, I want to go back to... Um, so, a lot of... Because you said if someone says, God created me wrong, or... It's, yeah. It's like... It's not okay. Yeah. People with low self-esteem and depression and mental yeah. illnesses yeah. seem to have this thing where they think God hates them, or God yes. um, not love them, or God created them um, yeah. wrong. Yeah. How can I talk to people about that and tell them that God loves everyone, God does not create you wrong? How, does, how can I give them that belief or that mindset? Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the statement that I made about somebody questioning God or like not being... Look, somebody might not be happy with the way their hair looks or their nose or their, whatever it is for that matter. These, these are things that, you know, we're human beings, we... And these are all influenced by our um, society. These are the things that make women feel less, you know, more ugly and you need to look at this and do uh, Botox and uh, get this done and get that done. Society's put this pressure on women, sadly. Otherwise, we as human beings, if we didn't have these pressures, everyone would be happy with the way they look. But there's standards that have been set, that's not even real, it's actually rigged. You look at these models who are on these magazines, yeah. they don't even look the way they are in real life. Because it's all Photoshop. She can come and say, you know, can you make my stomach look this and make my this look big, whatever. So the thing is that stands. So what we say is, we're talking about people who's genuinely ascribing a mistake in the sense where like Allah is wrong or this that and again look they can repent if, they, if it's coming from a place of you know upset we all say things that we don't mean so I'm talking about someone who's outright arrogant like Iblis I don't think these people fall into it and again it goes back to them knowing who Allah is you know if they know who Allah is and again connecting themselves to the Quran Islam I believe Islam is a solution to many things once they fully immerse themselves in Islam it will get rid of all of this, this stuff. That's what it did to me when I came to Islam 11 years ago. I, I, I went from societal uh, chains I was enslaved in and I had multiple masters, not literal, you know, like, you know, trying to, trying to please the opposite gender, trying to live a certain lifestyle, working overtime, having money, cut. All, this, all these were my slaves. They were masters. They, I was serving them. And that's what Allah tells us, tells us in the Quran. Have you seen the one who has, th I think it's three masters compared to the one who has one master? The parable is what? When you have one master, which is Allah, God Almighty, when he tells you how to, what to wear, how to live, you get a direct commandment. Now imagine if, I, if there's three masters you guys have, and I say to you, I want you to jump. The other one says, no, I want you to sit. The other one says, what do you want me to do? Do all three. How, exactly. That's why Allah gives a parable. And that's how it was with me when I was living uh, as a non-Muslim and doing all this stuff. I realized it doesn't bring me happiness because I'm living for others. Me going, like doing, getting a university degree, so my family can be happy. Going and doing this, working overtime, money, this, that, why, so I can go. It was, I was just in this perpetual cycle of unhappiness. That's why I had to wake up and say to myself, there has to be a greater purpose, you know? And I always say, when I enslaved myself to Allah is when I became free. That's when I became free. That's when I realized my true freedom. You know why? Because I only care about what Allah thinks of me. 
I don't care what people think car I drive. I don't care what they think what I wear. Before it would be like, oh no, I need to look this way and that way. Or what would that, they say, I don't care about you, man. When I die, you're not even gonna come to my grave. You're probably gonna speak ill of me. Why should I waste the majority of my life being upset because when I go to my friends and say, oh, you know, oh, I don't know. I don't know what girls say, but you know, oh, your makeup looks like this. Or you go to your friends and you're, oh, you know, you, you look, I don't care, man, I'm gonna live for you. When you have that, you, then you realize what freedom is about because you free yourself from the shackle of societal pressures. And that's why I, I recommend a book called Beauty Sick. If you guys buy it, it's from a non-Muslim author. Very good, especially for females, because I believe the biggest pandemic we have is this whole, you know, makeup industry, the beauty sickness, because these standards are given. I mean, there was a study done that when COVID happened, there were so many more women that were carrying on wearing the masks. And they asked them why. They said, well, you know what? I don't have to do makeup in the morning and I don't need to be judged by it. They were, they, they, they were not for COVID. They were not scared of COVID. They were like, you know, I'm afraid of being judged. You know, you have women who are being specific dress sense, wearing five inch heels to work and their, 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 their ankles are bleeding. Why are these standards there? I mean, you go clubbing and it's like minus, it's like freaking three degrees. And you've got girls in miniskirt. The point is not a woman in this country can dress up how she likes. The point is, if you go to these girls and tell them, do you choose to wake up and take two hours to do makeup? And then your hair. And then do you choose to wear a skirt that's going to, it's, it's freezing outside, yeah? yeah? And then you're wearing heels that make your feet bleed that you take them off and walk in bloody pavement. You know how cold pavement is? If you ask them, they would think and say, you know, actually, I don't choose to do this. I am pressured subconsciously and I think it's, oh, I love it. No, you don't, you know? So the same applies to men as well. So these things are there. And I believe once you accept Islam, you find your true freedom. Yeah. What, what's, what's stopping you, Sister Lucy, from accepting Islam? Uh, honestly, other people's perspectives. Okay. Um, would you mean like family members or friends or...? My family would be inherently against it. They just think yeah. it's, so, it's a foreign. It is. Um, they don't know. They, hmm. It would be... Everyone, everyone else can do it, but not my daughter. That's interesting because my dad, like my dad is my dad's heavily... Like, it's not just a... I know with the English people, they're a bit more... If it makes you happy. They have this principle, it's like, yeah. if it makes you happy. Yeah. With my dad, it's, I don't care if it makes you happy. So with my dad, my dad was very like, my dad said, the thing that I hate the most has been born into my family. I was kicked out of my house. Um, and I'm not saying my dad's evil. My dad sees us foreign. And also he's had some bad experience with Muslims back in our country. So I would say the following, sister, look, at the end of the day, I understand your family members can, you know, be upset, that's, that's totally normal. And I think, I think you're more lucky than me. You know, I'm sure your family would be a thing, but again, I'm just trying to understand, is there any um, questions that are stopping you or is this the only thing? I don't think there's any questions stopping me. So then you do, okay, so let me ask you a simple question. Do you believe God is one? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe that the Quran is from God Almighty? It's the right word of God. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do you believe the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger? From what I understand, yeah. You're a, okay, let me put it like this. You, you, you are a Muslim. So let, me, let, me, let me give you an example. I'll give you an example. What's your favorite f uh, food? Um, what is it? Like, I'll tell you mine. Mine is uh, chicken and black bean sauce, uh, halal uh, from Heron Tours. They did not sponsor this video. Uh, spicy noodles. Korean spicy spicy noodles. noodles. Perfect. Okay, I want you to repeat after me. I love, I love spicy noodles. Spicy noodles. <laughs> okay, now the Shahada is obviously far more greater than this, yeah. but internally you already know you love spicy noodles. You've just told me you love spicy noodles. Just stating something You're already. stating what you already believe. That's why we say the one who utters, he's a, he says, I'm a Muslim on his tongue, but doesn't believe in his heart is a munafik. It's somebody who has hypocrisy. Somebody who believes it in his heart, but doesn't utter it is a disbeliever. And that's, I'm talking about those who know deep down. You're not those type. You are the one that you believe in your heart and you want to utter, but obviously there's things where you're a little bit concerned about, which is family, etc. Um, again, look, there is a support network that we do have. I would say, don't let that stop you. I can't look in the Quran in chapter Surah Baqarah verse 256. It says there's no compulsion in religion. Truth is clear from falsehood. So I believe my dear sister, you are a Muslim. I believe you're sincere. From what I have observed, you seem like a genuine person. You seem like a nice person. That's why you have nice friends like this. You guys, you know, alhamdulillah. So I would say, sister, look, it's, it's totally up to you. But take your shahada. You find off the loose. You don't need to do it on camera. You're not doing nothing for me. We can do it off camera. We can go like, it's, even if I say to you, go on your way back, on your way here, I'll give you a statement, read it. It's not about that, but I would personally say to you, take a shahada. You've got nothing to lose. It's just a um, key that you open the door, your journey starts. You know, and we have ups and downs. I have my ups and downs. I came to Islam 11 years ago and I had to come to that realization. Um, 
Am I going to follow my forefathers knowing they're, that they're in the wrong? Allah says that in the Quran. Are you going to follow your fathers knowing that they were in falsehood? I couldn't do that. I couldn't live with myself knowing that because my family members hate Islam, they're hostile towards Islam, that just so they're going to be upset. Of course, I don't want to upset them. But let me tell you something, sister. Yeah? Allah sometimes chooses people like you and me to be ambassadors to Islam. Because I know many people who come to Islam, they come from hostile backgrounds. Their sister comes to Islam. The mother comes to Islam. I know one person. Have you heard of Abdul Rahim Green? Okay, so he's been a Muslim for about 30 plus years. His father, same, staunch, didn't like it. He came from a really, his, his dad was a banker. Really wealthy family. Family was against it. He stuck by his guns, yeah? And then his father on his deathbed accepted Islam. He's got a video, I'll send you the video. His father on his deathbed said the Shahada. And we have a hadith about this. The hadith says that on the, on the day of judgment, a person will come in front of God Almighty, and it's so powerful, SubhanAllah. They will come to God Almighty and God Almighty will present all of the sins they've done and they will look mountains like it. And he's like, I'm, I'm going to hell. Like it's, it's, it's done. And then they will put onto the Mizan. The Mizan is the scale. He will think he's going to hellfire. God Almighty will bring a statement and place it that will unbalance everything. And that statement is La ilaha illallah. That Shahada, so, and that applies to a person because when he died, he was not Muslim. He had all of those sins accumulated. The only thing he has on the Day of Judgment is what? La ilaha illallah is the only thing he has before he died. So I would say, sister, it's totally up to you. You can take a Shahada with me. You can take a Shahada by yourself. But I would recommend you take it. Which one would you like? No, okay. Perfect. No problem. Doesn't need to be. Inshallah, what we'll do is, there's a sister there, inshallah, I want to connect you to. But inshallah, guys, make dua for Sister Lucy and, um, and Juwit, inshallah. What does that mean? Um, generosity. Ah, okay, interesting. You've got a good friend here. Have you, are you best friends, yeah? Yeah. Good, inshallah. Now you guys can pray together. Inshallah. inshallah. But you got to pray for us too. Of course. You can't be, you can't be forgetting us and the camera, man. You know, all these people here. And I'm carrying all these mics with me. <laughs> I'm joking. My dear uh, brothers and sisters, if you're watching this, make dua for our sister Lucy and our sister Judy. Judy. I'm bad with names. I'm bad with names. Sometimes I forget my own name. Okay, may Allah bless you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm good, man. Good. Sorry, how are you? No problem. Give me just two seconds. I want to um, take you guys. I want to give you guys a few things. Did you guys know the Prophet peace be upon him said? قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن تحت ظل صدقته يوم القيامة. Prophet peace be upon him said, the one who gives in sadaqa, his sadaqa will be a shay on Yom Al and we're here every Friday and Sunday doing dawah to many people. Alhamdulillah, seven shahadas two weeks ago. Shahadu. And La Ilaha Illallah. Two shahadas last week. Two shahadas last week. You can support this, brothers and sisters, with the material. Alhamdulillah, some of them we pay for, some of them, Alhamdulillah, we get for free as you guys donated to the Salah Plus project. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, if you can donate whatever you can, it will help our operations to have a cameraman, an editing team, and some of the brothers who come here, Alhamdulillah, and dedicate their time and effort to giving dawah, inshallah. The link is in the description box below. Barakallahu feekum.